Right. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, hi, I'm, I'm Colin King. I'm the newest member of the Colonel team, and I've um, been with the Colonel team for about three months. So uh, if you haven't recognized my face, it's because I'm new. Right. Um, <laughs> I've... I originally um, didn't anticipate I'd be doing a talk today, so you have to bear with me. Um, I did, um, about five or six week, weeks ago, study um, various internet documents I found on what's new and different in 2625 and 2626, which is coming up. Um, so my notes here are really cut down from that. Um, looking at it, um, between 2624 and 2625, there's been over 12,000 commits um, and if you look at the sum total of that, that's about a million extra lines of code. Um, also, there's a lot of code being removed and a lot of new code put in to make that million lines of extra code. So a lot of changes. Um, what you think, think about it, there's about nine million lines of code in the kernel. So that's a significant amount of change going on. So um, I did think originally of going through each commit and telling you, you know, about each one, but <laughs> that could take some time. So I've, <laughs> I've got a very quick, very brief um, ov uh, overview, really. Um, but if you want to know more, I have got the original document, which I can send you an email copy of, and you can go, <laughs> go for it in greater detail if you want. Um, part of saying what's new is also saying what's old and what's been removed. And SMBFS um, has been removed. So everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> to be pr uh, so, SIFS is obviously taking that over. Um, also, file system wise, ext4, which is you know, XT, ext3 next generation, basically, um, is 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 maturing. It's got some really good features. Um, one of them, for example, is the journaling, and that's got um, the ability of checksumming um, journal entries. So there's you know extra security there and things. So lots of goodies in there. That's just a highlight of one. And also, ext4 allows you to have 48-bit inodes. So look forward to some really big files there. <laughs> um, storage, libata is continuing to, um, to grow and you know, lots of bug fixes going in. Um, there's support for a lot of chipsets. I, I won't um, give you a list here, but you know, we're seeing big improvements and also little subtle changes, little quirks being added um, to work around buggy hardware. So I think we're going to see more stability with LibATA. Um, the other thing which has been changing a lot is the scheduler. And um, one really cool feature, any, anyone, any of you um, familiar with PowerTop? Um, it's a really cool tool for seeing where, where all your power is going on your laptop. Well, um, to go with that, um, latency top is being added in 2625. So for you real-time guys who really want to see where all those cycles are going and seeing where the latency is occurring in the kernel, then latency top is going to be part of 2625. So that's, you know, that, that's good news there. Um, to go also with the scheduler, there's been a lot of um, changes with the real-time um, scheduling options. So there's lots, lots of extra compile time options there. Um, you know, well, I, I won't enumerate them, but... <laughs> um, what else? Well, um, lots of other things, little subtle things appearing in the, in the slash proc um, file system. One of them, uh, just to give you a note, is if you want to look at um, your resonant set, set size of, of a process, there's some fine tuning being added to that. And one of them is called the proportional set size. Now, I think this is really quite neat because when normally you look at the size of a process, you've got you know, all the shared libraries shared across lots of different applications which is used in the same shared library. Well, the proportional set allows you to actually see how much of that shared memory is um, a part of that single process. So, I don't know, if you've got, say, you know, a meg being used in a library across three processes which are sharing that, then that will show up as a third of a meg um, in, in the memory usage stats. So, that's quite handy. But it's a bit geeky if you really want to look at things like that. But you know, just to let you know, it's there. Um, spin locks. Now these are um, the, these are interesting because originally when spin locks were um, uh, implemented, um, the thought was, well, these these are a kind of a busy spinning lock locking mechanism. And um, the initial thought was the way it was implemented that it would be shared 
um, across all, all process and nodes quite equally, but someone did some analysis in this and found out that you do kind of get a hogging uh, effect and um, some, some processes just seem to not actually be able to get in as um, and that causes a kind of bit of unfairness. So spin locks have been re-implemented um, with this thing called FIFO tickets. So it's first in, first out, which does allow you to spread the, the sharing of a spin lock more evenly. So that should have some big effects on some SMP um, systems where that kind of problem's been manifesting itself. Um, just to let you know, um, we, we're using AppArmor for protection, but there is a thing called Simplified Memory Access Control Kernel, which is SMAC. Um, <laughs> and the whole idea of SMAC is to basically make um, things like the whole security mechanism simpler, but um, apparently you know, it, it's easier to configure, but it isn't as good as AppArmor. So we're going to continue using AppArmor, but just to let you know, there is an alternative called SMAC. Uh, virtualization, uh, lots of changes in KVM. Some of them are very small and some of them are quite big. Um, a lot of extra work in implementing some of the um, instructions which are being emulated. So should see some performance improvements there. And also virtual I.O. Um, this allows you, I, th I think it's to do with PCI devices. I'm not really too sure about this, but it does allow um, QMO, QMU-based systems to run a bit faster with, um, yeah, thank you. <laughs> um, okay, um, x86 architectural changes. Um, for extra security, the break region on on new processes has been randomized. So break doesn't always now start at a certain defined location. It can zip around. So that, that's, that's pretty cool. And um, for people who like doing debugging at a very low level, uh, such as me, um, <laughs> um, you can now debug the kernel using firewire. Um, so that's handy. And even right on early, the, before you get to kind of the early print case, very early on, you can do some firewire debugging on that. So that makes life easy when we've got some really nasty bugs to sort out. Um, power management. Yeah, the continuous suspend resume, you know, things are hopefully going to improve there. <laughs> um, I still get problems with my laptop, so uh, it's, it kind of keeps on making me focused to want to work out, how, let's sort these problems out. Um, aggressive use of um, deep C states in CPU idling. Um, so hopefully, as we move to 2.625 and then 2.626 for Intrepid, we should see some better power savings. So, what, what? <laughs> sorry? Well, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, okay. Um, other stuff, PCI subsystem, PCI Express is now hot pluggable. Um, there's been a whole lot of change in the network stack. I won't go into it, but the list is, is just huge. So. I, I don't know where to begin on that, so I'll just say big changes. <laughs> lots of lots of Im subtle improvements, but big changes there. Um, Wi-Fi, there are now seven new drivers um, entering into 2625. Um, so we should see some improvement there. Um, new firmware for Broadcom, B43. The um, Aethros 5K been added. Various others. Well, I've, I've got a. Big one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Video for Linux. Um, there's better support for hybrid tuners. So, I, I haven't actually got any hardware to test it out. So, if anyone <laughs> could give me feedback on that. And the crypto library has been expanded. There's lots more stuff in there. Oh, again, I won't, I won't enumerate it all. Other things, um, any of you got um, been running with big images? Apparently, 2625 allows you to run with images over 2 gig in size now. So I, I didn't realize that was a restriction, but 2 gig's big. And I, I, I was just thinking I'd really hate to see the core dump from that. <laughs> and um, support for A.out has now been removed. <laughs> it's a cool one. And, uh, oh, one other one, okay, um, I, I, I stumbled upon is um, when, when tasks, uh, processes get um, are put to sleep, a new f um, flag has been added called task killable. And um, this allows you to actually kill sleeping tasks. And the, 
One little side effect to that is, um, if any of you have been using stuff on NFS and the server disappears, you just can't kill any process, which is there. Well, you, with, with you this... Oh, okay, thanks. Right. I didn't know that. Right. <laughs> but now with task killable, you can now actually kill those wretched processes. So that's one little feature. 